In this video, we're gonna click off our overdrive pedals and get comfy with clean tone. Coming up. Welcome back to the channel, Marjorie Ryan Kilio. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. Clean tone, not slightly overdriven, not even slightly edge of breakup. I'm talking about pure, pristine, clean guitar sound. Now you're probably saying, yeah, it's fine for rhythm when you're strumming chords or playing arpeggiated chords with a little bit of delay or reverb, but for solos, no. Many of us guitar players, including me, shy away from using a clean tone for soloing. Since the dawn of rock and roll, when we first learned to turn our amps all the way to 10, these go to 11. Followed by pedals that would boost our signal into the set amps, and then finally having pedals that would either saturate or distort or fuzz out our sound for us. Many of us guitarists have relied on that dirty tone as our go-to for soloing, whether we're playing blues, rock, whatever. And don't get me wrong, it's a great tone. You know, it has sustain, dynamics, but lately I've been feeling like it's kind of been a crutch for most of my guitar playing life. You know, I feel more comfortable and at home if I have a little bit of overdrive on, not necessarily full on distortion, but just enough to warm up my sound and give me a little extra sustain. And I'm willing to bet that some of you out there are the same way. But today I wanted to make this video to remind you that there is beauty in having a completely clean sound uh, and not to be afraid of it. And I wanted to share with you some tips that have helped me get more comfortable with clean. Before we get started, if you're into these kinds of videos, make sure you click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to stay notified of all my new videos, premieres, and live streams. So the amp I'm using today is the Fender Tone Master Deluxe Reverb. It has an extremely awesome clean sound, probably one of the best clean sounds I've ever heard. And if you're not familiar with this amp, uh, it came out last year in 2019 and it's completely tubeless. So there's no tubes. Essentially, it's a solid state digital version of the classic deluxe reverb combo amp. It's very similar to the tone stack of the original version, meaning it stays pretty clean until you get to about four or five and then it starts getting dirty and gives you a little bit of overdrive if you want it. Most of the cool new features are actually in the back, uh, including a five-way attenuator that can go from 22 watts at its loudest all the way down to 0.2 watts for bedroom use or, you know, just playing at home. There's also an XLR out in the back with cabinet simulation, so you don't have to mic the speaker cabinet. Uh, you can just run it to the, the front of house mixing board or into your computer for recording, which is how I'm hooked up now. The reverb and tremolo sound amazing. Like I said, they're digital versions of the original amp. And it's super light, it's like 20 pounds. So it's great for taking to gigs, especially if you're getting uh, up in age like me. Uh, the guitar I'm using today is my new Fender Custom Shop 68 uh, Relic Strat. Uh, that was originally a left-handed guitar, but I flipped it righty because I am an extreme Hendrix fanatic. More about that in another video. BB King, Mark Knopfler, John Mayer are the first people that come to mind when I think of players that have recorded solos with really clean tones. Obviously, there's a ton of jazz, country, and R&B players that solo just fine with a clean sound, but in this video, I wanna focus more on the blues and rock side of things because those are the genres that I find myself relying on an overdriven sound for when I solo. So why do we love overdrive so much? For me, I think it's because of the sustain and dynamics. So you don't have to pull. When I have a little bit of overdrive, I can get somewhat clean if I play lighter or turn down my guitar volume, or I can really dig into the strings and get it to overdrive and kind of bark a little bit more. A good overdrive sound, whether it comes from a pedal or your amp, reacts to your playing. It responds to what your fingers are doing. So, sustain and dynamics. It's what I want to strive for when I'm playing completely clean. And there's a couple ways to get some help in those areas that I wanna talk about. So the first one is pretty obvious and that's using a compressor pedal. Today I am plugged into a uh, compressor by JHS. It's the Pulp and Peel version four. So the way I set my compressor pedals when I do use them, 
Uh, I set the compression just enough to uh, keep the signal level. Um, and then I'll give it a little bit of volume boost. So you can see on this pedal, uh, you have a knob for volume, you have a knob for compression, um, and you have a blend knob. So you can actually blend your dry signal with the compressed signal. So it doesn't uh, sound so in your face. So um, that's how I like to set it. I like to make it sound like there's no compression uh, on my signal. So what is compression? I'm not an engineer, but my understanding of compression is that it evens out everything. It evens out your volume. So, so when you attack a string, for instance, the loudest point of that waveform or that signal is gonna be right at the point of attack. That's going to be the loudest point. And then over time, your sound will decay. It'll get software, software, softer. So what a compressor does, it brings down the loud parts and brings up the uh, not so loud parts, the softer parts. So it kind of tries to keep everything around the same volume, around the same level over time. So it kind of gives you the illusion of sustain, right? Over time, you know, as your sound decays after you play a note, the compressor is still trying to bring up the level of that decaying sound. So it kind of creates sustain by adjusting uh, your sound to where everything is on the same level, if that makes sense. So real quickly, for an example, I'm gonna play some single note stuff first without the compressor, and then I'm gonna flip the compressor on so you can hear the difference. Listen to it. So hopefully you were able to hear that the sound with the compressor on was a little bit fuller uh, and rang out a little bit more. It's not necessarily a huge difference, but that little bit does make a difference. Another factor that you might not be aware of is your choice in pickup position uh, as well as your pickup height. First, I wanted to point out that I prefer single coil pickups when I'm playing with a clean tone. Uh, it's just a personal preference. Uh, I like the definition, especially of single coil Strat pickups. So I usually gravitate toward the neck position, as do a lot of players, and I think I figured out why. So if you look at a guitar string from point to point, right? It's gonna have the most vibration or like the widest amplitude uh, in the middle of the string, right? So it makes sense that the pickup closest to the middle of the string uh, is going to get more sound. It's going to pick up more. It's gonna sound fuller as opposed to the, br uh, the bridge pickup, which is closer to the end of the string. It's got a lot of attack and volume, but the sound is going to decay quicker. So I'm going to play a high note uh, first on the neck position and then uh, in the bridge position so you can hear. Hopefully I can play the same attack. Let's see. So here's the neck position. Here's the bridge position. It's very slight, but it is there, and the tone is thinner, and I don't know if it's a frequency thing. Maybe us humans can only pick up a certain range of frequencies, so when, uh, maybe for some reason, the bridge pickup, uh, since it's thinner, we're not hearing the, the frequencies as much as the neck pickup. I don't know, I'm not a scientist. But I'll play an example of, of just picking between the neck and the, the bridge pickup. Go, go and have a bite. I think what it is is the bridge pickup has a stronger peak at the attack. And then the volume quickly goes down, or at least relative to that 
attack. So maybe it's an, another illusion thing where it just sounds like it's more attacky and less sustainy compared to the neck. But one thing's for sure that most of us can associate the neck pickup as being a sweeter sound compared to a bridge pickup, which tends to be a harsher kind of ice picky sound. So I think you're gonna get the optimal sustain from the neck pickup. Pickup height is also a factor uh, because we're essentially dealing with a magnet. I'll link to an article that I found written by Craig Anderton, but essentially, when the pickup is too close to the strings, uh, it may sound louder, but you're gonna get less sustain because the force of the magnet is choking the, the sound a bit. It's choking the vibration of the string, causing it to stop vibrating. Whereas if the pickup is too far from the string, while it has more sustain, uh, and you can see on, in the article there's a waveform comparing it, when the pickup is far away from the strings, it may not have your desired tone or the volume that you're looking for. Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> so it's really, it's a matter of finding the sweet spot of, of the height of the pickups. And for me, I just kind of do it by ear. There's no special number or special measurement that I use to, to find the sweet spot of the pickups. It's kind of, you know, I, I play it, I, I have my guitar plugged in and I play. <laughs> And if it sounds like the uh, the string is getting choked or it's not vibrating the way it should, then I'll bring it down. Uh, and in the, the opposite way, if um, if it sounds weak or it sounds thin, then usually the pickup uh, is too low, and I'll, I'll raise it a little bit. So it's just finding that middle ground. <laughs> Something else to consider is the way you pick uh, and possibly the shape of the pick that you're using. So we all know that the harder you pick a string, the more the sound is going to get choked, you know? See how, hear how it kind of thins out the sound when I pick harder? So you have to find a sweet spot in your playing in the way that you attack the string. Personally, and if you noticed uh, in the opening performance, uh, I kind of like to use my fingers. So I put the pick down and just use my bare fingers. I feel like I have a little more control over the attack of the string. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I have more surface area with the the meat on my finger. But compared to using a pick, it's like a fuller sound, you know? You know, a pick is very percussive, um, but with the fingers, it doesn't have to be percussive. It can be if I want it to be. But if I want to go for that really sustainy, vibey thing. And we've seen guys like John Mayer switch from pick to fingers for a different sound. And I feel like a lot of times when he's got his clean, totally clean tone on, um, he'll switch to fingers. And it doesn't have to be just fingers. You can use your thumb like Wes Montgomery or Guy King for like a really fat tone. And I'll go back to a pick. Like when I hit that note, it sounds a lot thinner and feels like it's dying out as opposed to using something like my thumb. Something else that I've noticed a lot of players doing is, so we have our typical 
you know, modern guitar pick. It's like a teardrop shape. Hopefully you can see this against that white background. But um, the most widely accepted use of this pick is using the pointiest end uh, to play with, right? But a lot of players will rotate it and use what I call the butt end, even though it doesn't look like a butt, but um, the, the, the more rounded edge. And it kind of gives you a thicker sound overall. It's less um, attacky, smoother sound. And I'll give you an example over a backing track. Another thing that's super important uh, when playing clean and getting notes to sustain is vibrato and your vibrato technique. You know, vibrato is going to give you that extra note length and that little bit of oomph with your string vibration. That extra push over the cliff, you know what we do? Oh. There's a bunch of different techniques uh, with vibrato that I could go on and on about, but that, I should probably say that for another video. But uh, for instance, let's take a BB King style vibrato, which I do a lot of. Um, so basically it's like anchoring, it's using your thumb as a hook, anchoring it around your neck and using that leverage to kind of pull the string or that note away like that another technique is what i call the clapton technique which is kind of the opposite where you're not anchoring anything uh behind the neck and your your hand is basically free floating and instead of this motion, it's this motion. Which does have a little bit of a different sound, but both techniques make the string vibrate a little bit longer. Depending on how, you know, you're attacking it. Not too hard, but not too soft. And uh, you know, it's a marriage of your right hand and your left hand. on the compressor. I feel like the BB King technique, for me, is a little bit of a more aggressive vibrato. It's a little wider. Clapton technique is more kind of subdued depending on how you do it. Hear that? Maybe that's just me. Uh, obviously there's other forms of vibrato. You could do totally like classic vibrato, which is a linear motion. I don't even know if I'm doing it right. Kind of like that, vi it's like a violin. It's like a violin vibrato. One thing that I see a lot of players doing, which is kind of a pet peeve of mine, uh, is this whole neck shake thing, you know? Or this. For me, that does nothing. I think it's more of a, a visual. They'll do a lot of chord stuff too, right? I don't know if that does anything, right? But it looks cool, I guess. Uh, something that is kind of also dependent on either a pedal or your amp uh, is reverb. Reverb was kind of designed to fake sustain. You know, it holds the end of the note out a little bit more. The thing with reverb is if, if it's not right or if you use too much, your sound is gonna get totally washed out. Uh, but used correctly and like everything else, when you find the sweet spot, uh, it can be an effective way to give you a little more sustain. So 
Here is my sound without reverb. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of reverb. I think I like to put it on around three with this amp. So especially when you're sustaining single notes. It does give you that effect of sustain. Or at least a bigger sound in the mix. But if I use too much, it's not gonna sound that great. A little too much, a little too much effect. You're losing the attack. You know, the attack is getting lost in that washiness. So it's, you know, it's about finding the sweet spot to, to give you just enough reverb to where it's not so in your face. Kind of like the compressor pedal. Last thing I wanted to talk about is string gauge. Now there's been a lot of talk lately about string gauge. Moving to thinner strings um, is kind of in vogue at the moment, which for some tones uh, is great, but for me, for a totally clean sound, you know, if your strings are too thin, or actually if they're too th thick as well, they might not vibrate uh, optimally for your particular guitar, per your particular technique. But I think for the majority of people, a range of, you know, nines to 11s uh, suits everybody. Uh, if you're someone like Josh Smith or even Stevie Ray Vaughan and you're using 12s or 13s, those are heavy strings, but obviously there's a way that they've developed their technique to get some amazing tones. So it's not to say that, you know, using heavy strings or thin strings are bad and you're not going to be able to, you know, get the sustain and dynamics out of them, but you will have to work a little bit harder as far as adjusting your technique to uh, compensate for those gauges. Um, so for me, tens are great middle of the road for the majority of setups and players and styles and everything, but feel free to experiment. I mean, I've got a couple guitars right now that have nines, one that has eights, with the thinner strings, I found that it does choke the sound a lot more and I'm having to adjust my technique and the strength of my attack to get it to vibrate optimally. Okay guys, I hope this video gave you the courage to play without an overdrive pedal, without amp distortion, and just go clean. If you enjoyed this video, click that thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comments section. Be sure to share it with your friends, your family, your tax preparer. Oh, f I don't want to do my taxes. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, guitar lessons and gear demos, make sure you click the subscribe button. Thanks again for watching. I'm Arjun Ron Kilio, and I'll see you in the next video.